chapter 25. I'm, uh, I'm teaching through this in a different way than I've, I've done before. I'm, I don't know. I've, I hope it's a, a blessing to you. Last, last week, we looked at building a life from chapter 24, uh, verse 3. He says, through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And uh, what I've been doing in, in each chapter is looking for a theme and just making application from the verses to, uh, to that theme. And uh, last week, with building a life, an important thing is starting right. If we haven't started right, sometimes we need to go back and, and rebuild. Uh, but then we don't want to give up, and we want to have the right priorities. And at the end of the chapter, he talked about not being lazy. If we're going to build a life, it, it's, it's hard work. Well, in, uh, in chapter 25, I want to look at relationships, or subtitle, quarrels, how to avoid them. <laughs> And uh, I think it'll, it'll be a blessing to you. Two of our memory verses are in chapter 25. Um, and the one is the, the theme we're looking at. It's verses 9 and 10. Uh, Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. And, you know, relationships, uh, they can be hard. Uh, they can be great, but uh, they can also be hard. And uh, tonight we're, we're going to relate much of this to, uh, to relationships. Uh, there's other applications, but uh, that's, that's the main one we're going to look at tonight. I've got 15 things I'm going to give you. I've given you notes there. Oh, didn't get Doyle one. Um, we'll share. So let's, uh, the first verse, let me just uh, read that. There are also, uh, these are also proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. It, it's interesting to, to see that because... Proverbs 1.1, 1, 1, he says, <clears throat> the Proverbs of Solomon, the son, son of David, king of Israel. So chapters 1 through 24, those, Solomon just wrote them out. Does anybody else need a, a copy of the notes? I think we're pretty well right now. Um, but when we get to chapter 25, these are ones that uh, some of his men here uh, have copied out. of. There's still things that Solomon said, but uh, they make that distinction. Let me read verse 2 and following. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Now, uh, let me relate this to, uh, uh, to, to relationships. Uh, number one, Get the facts. <laughs> now, he talks about it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. You know, there's just things that are hard to figure out sometimes. And it's taken centuries for people to figure out some things. And he says it's the honor of kings is to search out a matter. And if, and when you're talking about relationships, uh, it, it takes some work to get to know a person. You know, you, you're not always just going to see straight off, you know, what, what's going on in, in a person's life. And... Uh, I wrote this note down. Realize that God and some people know more than you do. <laughs> sometimes when you're dealing with somebody, you know, it may surprise you and it may shock you, but sometimes there'll be somebody who knows more than you do. And you should listen to them. Maybe they've searched out a matter that you haven't. But the second thing there in number one is look for purity. Look for goodness. You know, he talks there in verses... Um, four and five about getting rid of the dross, uh, taking away the wicked from before the king. You, you don't have a nasty mindset when you're dealing with relationships. It's easy to do that. Uh, I, I know sometimes someone who also lives in our house will say something. And sometimes I'll just assume that there's, that she's getting at me, you know? <laughs> I've done it to her. Uh, you'll say something and, and she'll... Bristle. Bristle, that's the word, yeah. <laughs> and it's because there's, there's, there's an assumption there that, oh, what, what does he mean by that? You know? uh, and, and it's easy to do. You laugh because it's true, isn't it? That's right. And uh, 
in relationships, try and have a pure attitude toward it. Just assume they mean good by what they're saying. You know, they're not trying to get you. They're not trying to be mean. They don't have any hidden agenda. Unless they tell you their agenda, then, then believe them then too. But don't be satisfied with dross. Just stop preaching. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> um, what, what we're saying here is seek higher ground. You know, look, look for purity. And it's not our opinion or our experience that decides what's right or wrong. You know, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You need to look for what, what God is doing. But in our relationships with, with people, um, had two parts to number one there. Uh, get the facts and, and look, for, look for goodness, look for purity. The second one there in verses 6 and 7, this is an easy one. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, that thou should, I'm sorry, come up hither, then that thou shouldst be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Talking about relationships, don't promote yourself. Uh, you know, in conversation, in relationships, you don't have to promote yourself. Now, I know in the modern world that's kind of a, an accepted thing. You know, even job applications, you know, they'll ask you, what's, what's good about you? <laughs> uh, well, I'm very humble. <laughs> uh, words are cheap is basically what he's saying here. And, and it's better to, to be humble and have them say, oh, come on up, you know, uh, than to promote yourself and say, what are you doing up here? Get down with the rest of those <laughs> people, you know. Uh, in chapter 18 and verse 16, he says, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. What he's saying is what you do is more important than what you say. You know, if, if you're doing the, the right things, if you're doing uh, what God wants you to do, that'll, that'll make room for you. you. You don't have to promote yourself. Uh, in verse 27, he says in, in chapter uh, 25, It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. You see that sometimes where someone promotes themselves. And uh, that's, that's not really the uh, recommendation you need. Jesus taught this same basic thing in Luke 14. Talking about, you know, not, not taking the higher place, but uh, taking the humble attitude. And he certainly uh, lived that. Thirdly, number verse 8, Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Uh, in relationships, don't be hasty. Don't, especially don't be hasty to disagree. You know, when, uh, when things are going on, stop and think. You know, they used to always say, count to ten. Uh, of course, it's hard to, hard to think when you count to ten, but uh, you know, don't be hasty to disagree. Don't just always think you have to, to disagree. Sometimes you need to, to well, you, you need to stop and think. Back in chapter 24, verse 5 and 6, he says, A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength, for by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there's safety. We need wise counsel. Uh, we need a multitude of, of counselors, not just hasty uh, decisions and disagreements. Then verse 9 and 10, this is our, one of our memory verses, Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. Uh, talk to the person, not about them. That's, uh, obviously all this is wise advice, but uh, we, we've all experienced that where your words will come back to you if, if you're not talking to the right people. Uh, be careful. Talk to the person, not about them. In uh, Matthew, when Jesus was describing uh, how we're to deal with problems in the church uh, as amongst Christians, he, Matthew 18, 15, he said, if thy brother tre trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault, between thee and him alone. Yeah, that's exactly right. Jesus is right, <laughs> of course. Uh, talk to the person, not about them. Verse 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Uh, commentators are not quite sure exactly what that means. <laughs> Other than good words are like a beautiful picture. Uh, that's probably, probably what it means. I had one commentator saying he saw a bunch of oranges in, in the snow, and he, I don't think that's what it means, <laughs> anyway, um, and this, this word fitly has to do with a wheel, 
Yeah, I find language very interesting. It has to do with when it comes around to the right time. It's, it needs to be said at the right time, the right words at the right time. You've probably experienced where you've said the right words at the wrong time. And boy, that can, that can cause chaos. Uh, the, the illustration we used to hear was, uh, you know, the husband's coming home from work, he's tired and, and annoyed, and he's got something on his mind, and, and the wife has been dealing with his kids, and you know, she's trying to prepare dinner, and the house is chaos, and that's when he approaches her about this really important subject. <laughs> uh, not a good time. That would not be a word fitly spoken, and uh, you won't make progress there. Uh, so uh, we need to be careful. Uh, we don't want to say the right word at the wrong time. We want to say the right word at the, at the right time. And in relationships, if you want to avoid quarrels, that's, that's a pretty good thing. See, there's probably, probably a lot of you could share good examples where you've said something and boom, you, you, you lit an explosion. <laughs> um, that can happen. Verse 12, he says, As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, no, let me just, I'll just stop reading there, just verse 12. He's basically saying, one, that we need to listen to reproof. Sometimes people will say something to you to correct you. And uh, if you're like the average person, you won't like that. But listen to reproof. Um, you know, as a pastor, sometimes people will, will come to me and, and uh, let me know there's something they don't like. And I try to keep myself open to hear that. Uh, you know, as a parent, as a a person at work, you know, whatever your situation, uh, we need to be, uh, we need to have an obedient ear. <laughs> but on the other hand, we need to also be wise reprovers. Uh, there's times when we need to have a word fitly spoken uh, to someone to, to correct them. Then in verse 13, as the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his masters. Uh, we need to be faithful. Now, one of the things that I think is, he's saying here is that we need to use faithful words. You know, sometimes in our words, we can say everything that's true, but actually mislead people. And we need to be a faithful messenger. And the, the opposite of this would be a gossip. And, you know, in gossip, there's always a grain of truth, maybe complete truth, but not said in the right spirit, in the right time, and in the right way. If you go up to verses 18 and 19, he says, A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Those are weapons. Club, sword, arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. If you're trying to get a message to someone and you send it with an unfaithful messenger, you know, he says it's like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. It, it's so annoying. It's so limiting, uh, but a faithful messenger. Uh, that's what God wants us to be. And we want to be people who refresh people. We don't want to drain them. We want to be refreshers. You know, you can, you can use words in a way that misleads. I heard an example. I, I, I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, a lady had sung in church, and uh, she, she said, you know, what did, the, what did the pastor say about it? What did he think of my singing? And she said, well, he said you had a heavenly voice. Oh, really? What were his exact words? He said, that was an unearthly sound. <laughs> that, that's a joke. But, uh, you know, some, sometimes we can do that in a way that is harmful to people. You know, we can make it look worse than it is or better than it is by our words. We need to be faithful messengers. If we can't say the truth, then uh, the best option is not to talk. Verse 15 he says, by long forbearing is a prince persuaded and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. You know, in relationships, we need to be patient. If we want to avoid quarrels, we, we don't want to be hasty. And we don't want to, you know, be, uh, uh, what was the one, hasty to disagree we talked about. Not everybody's going to be persuaded right away. You, you've had it happen. Somebody says something and you, and you have to think about it for a while. And then you think, yeah, they're, they're right. But, you know, when they initially say it, you don't necessarily have that response. Uh, so um, being patient, uh, soft tongue, breaketh the bone. That's an interesting picture. Verse 16, hast thou found honey? 
Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. <laughs> uh, don't overdo it. You know, in relationships, uh, be careful. You know, don't, don't be there so much that they, they're glad when you leave, you know. Uh, we need to be, be careful in, in our relationships. Verse 20, we've looked at 18 and 19. Verse 20, as he that taketh away a garment in cold weather and as, a, as vinegar in, upon nitre, so is he that singeth songs to an heavy heart. Be appropriate. Vinegar upon nitre, you know, you know what that does. It foams up, you know. Um, taking away a garment in cold weather, you know, that would be pretty hard-hearted, wouldn't it? Uh, we need to be uh, appropriate in our words. Uh, Ecclesiastes, he talks about, um, you know, there's a time for everything. Uh, there's a time to rejoice. There's a time to weep and so on. And uh, we need to be considerate of that in our, our relationships. Uh, God put in, in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. You know, if someone's sad, it, it isn't necessarily that we have to cheer them up. Sometimes we just need to weep with them uh, and so on. But uh, we need to, to be appropriate. Not, not only in our words, verse 26, uh, in our deeds, a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. You know, it's not, it's not appropriate, it's not right for righteous people to give way to unrighteousness. You know, we should stand firm. Uh, we need to be appropriate in our words and in our deeds, and, and that's true in our relationships as well. Uh, you know, sometimes there's just things that aren't appropriate for what our relationship is. Verse 21, a lot of things tonight. I, I don't apologize for that, but uh, a lot to take in. Verse 21, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. In relationships, be kind. You know, if you're disagreeing about something, be kind. Uh, it, it doesn't pay to, uh, to not be Christ-like uh, in our relationships. And then verse 23, here's a, here's a great verse. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. What he's saying there is don't welcome gossip. Let them know by how your face looks that you, you don't want to hear this. If they don't get that hint, put your hand up. I get that when I go door knocking. Hello, I'm from the church. Oh, <laughs> I know what they mean. Uh, and he's saying here, don't, don't welcome Gossip, or, or a backbiting tongue is the, the word he uses. Uh, back in number four, we, we talked about talking to the person, not about them. Uh, we were talking to somebody today saying how that uh, someone had talked to them and, and said things, and, and it was so hard because it, it was things about people, and, and she, she wanted her to stop and couldn't hardly get her to stop. And uh, You know, it, it's a hard thing, isn't it? We, we need to be careful of our relationships. Then... Verse 24, it is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. Don't be contentious. You know, from, from both point of, point of views here, the, the one that can, can change something would be the person who's a, a brawling person. That's not always, he doesn't always pick on the, on the women here. Uh, chapter 26, verse 21 as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Now, both men and women can be contentious, and it's like you're looking for a fight. Uh, if you're going to have good relationships, that's not going to do it. Uh, chapter 15, verse 18, I think this might be where we get the expression, a person is a stirrer, stirrer. Chapter 15, verse 18 says, A wrathful man stirreth up strife. He that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. You know, as, as Christians, we need to not be contentious in, in the way of looking for a, for a fight. Chapter 18, verse 19, I, I found this interesting. It says, a, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Sometimes the reason a person will be contentious with you is because you've offended them. And that's something to consider. Now, sometimes it's just because they're an angry person. Uh, door knocking is a classic example. I, I've headed up the, the, the pathway, 
and had people start yelling at me. <laughs> I hadn't offended them. <laughs> they just were having a bad day or bad life or whatever. Um, but sometimes when someone is at odds with you, pray about it, but sometimes it would help to ask them, listen, how, how have I offended you that, uh, that you're this, this way with me? Because quite often you'll find that, that that'll be the case, especially in the home, uh, close relationships. Now, sometimes we cause contentions, but don't be looking for, for a fight. And in chapter 25, verse 25, as cold water is to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. That's sure true, isn't it? Uh, it's good to hear something good, to hear a blessing. And we need to be careful that in our relationships, it's not always about bad things, the discussions. Uh, as a pastor, I'll get people say, Pastor, I want to talk to you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not always a bad thing. But, uh, you know, you think, oh, you know, and if you're not careful, you think, oh, you know, what's happened? And <laughs> you can think of a hundred different things, and each one worse than the next. Uh, are you a refresher or a drainer, you know? And there's times we have to talk about bad things. And there's times we have to have conflict and so on. But uh, we need to share the good news, too, share the blessings. Yeah, as a pastor, I want to hear when you're blessed. You know, if there just happens to be a sermon you get something out of, hey, let me know. That'll encourage me. <laughs> I might preach it again the next week. I don't know. <laughs> uh, share good news. And then the last one there is uh, verse uh, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Uh, we need to have practice temperance. We need to let the Lord control us. Uh, we, don't, we shouldn't be ruled by our emotions. Paul wrote about himself and under inspiration of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 9 and, and verse 27. He, he related it to the idea of an athlete as, as Christians. He says, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, we don't want to be controlled by our emotions. We want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And he's, he's more powerful than, than our emotions. I've given you a... a What's that called when you put a statement to each letter? Anyway, whatever that is, action there. Uh, I, I, this is not original with me. An acrostic, there we go. And I found this helpful. A is admit your emotion. You know, you're not going to deal with an emotion until you admit that you have it. Have you ever heard somebody shouting that they're not angry? <laughs> yeah, come on. Just, just admit it. C is consider the source. Uh, stop and think about what's going on. You know, is there some upset? Is there something that's happening, you know, not, not just your heart. I mean, obviously, it, are, it comes from within, but consider the source. T is thank God he will help. God has a solution. A is admit your emotion. C is consider the source. T is thank God he will help. Have a, have a positive attitude. I mean, God can help you. It, it always boggles my mind when I'm talking to people about a, a problem, and, and it's like, oh, you know, it's impossible. <laughs> Well, listen, it's not impossible with the Lord. He can help us. I is ID the proper biblical response. ID the proper biblical response. Now see what God says, how we should respond. Find some scripture. ID the proper biblical response. Then O is, is the catching point. Obey the Lord. <laughs> see what he says to do? ID it and then obey the Lord. And then the last one, N, is nurture the work of the Holy Spirit. Have, work with the Lord in this thing. Develop uh, what the Lord wants you to develop on, in that area. You know, some, uh, some of us are going to tend to be more fearful. Others are going to tend to be more angry. You know, you're going to have characteristics to our life. And that's the situation we have to deal with. You know, we can't do it for someone else. We've got to do it in our life. And there's going to be a variety of emotions. You don't want to be ruled by them. God gave them to us. The emotion itself is not necessarily wrong. It's how we use it. Most quarrels come from our anger, from our selfishness. You know, you read, like in the book of Acts, it, uh, I was just looking at a few verses on this today. And it said, uh, they're talking about a mob. It says, they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in the air. Uh, that's a group of people you don't want to be around. <laughs> uh, you know, they're angry. They're, they're ready to, to riot. Uh, and that's, that's not coming from the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's not coming from temperance and, and godliness. Well, what does God want? In Galatians 5.16, he says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, 
And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He wants us to walk in the spirit. Uh, one of my favorite verses on this is Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I mean, really, it all comes down. We want to be like Jesus, don't we? In, in relationships. There's going to be people that are just hard to love. But the Lord sees us, and he loves us. And uh, we need to be like him, be like Jesus. Uh, we need to speak the truth in love. There's a whole lot more we could look at, but I just found it interesting looking at, at this proverb, this chapter in, in this way. Any questions or comments before we take some prayer requests tonight?